Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Ixian aboard the Tycoon Space Station. We have traversed to another star system, Theta Crucis, which officially begins Chapter 3 of the game. We were attempting to pursue the Itemenanki, which I'm trying to pronounce correctly now, because apparently I've been doing that wrong the entire time as well. I didn't know it was Sumerian, okay? I thought this actually might be Japanese, because the sounds kind of line up with some of Hiragana's letters, right? Itemenanki. But no, apparently it's Itemenanki. That's more correct. I'm still probably doing it wrong, but you guys will live. Anyway, we pursued the UN structure, and oh, look at this. It appears that something must have gone horribly, horribly wrong. We'll have to figure out what's going to happen. I need to do a lot of the basic starting moves, which is to discover some resources around us, keep our economy nice and happy, keep the ship in good shape, even though right now we're actually looking pretty good considering all things. Uh, but eventually, we have to deal with a major threat, and that is this giant magnetic storm that is swallowing up half of the system. This storm is going to move, unlike in Chapter 2. So it is going to be a threat, and we have to move the Tycoon Space Station. However, as far as I recall from Chapter 3, this does not move on its own accord. Every time you find a point of interest and complete its event chain using a science ship, the storm progresses closer and closer to the Tycoon until it swallows up this entire sector. But then it leaves this area open. So what you could end up doing is deliberately not set off all of the events around the point of interest until you've mined out most of this area of the map, right? And then when you're ready to move, finish one, two, three, four events kind of in quick succession. Boom, boom, boom. The storm moves. You quickly book it to the other side of the system over here and then continue doing your mining and your uh, investigations off in this area. The good news also is once you do more points of interest on this side of the system, the storm does not come back. It actually does eventually go away. So then we'll have the entire star system to explore at our leisure. But anyway, the point is I'm not going to be beelining for these points of interest unlike with the other chapters. We're going to start nice and simple. I want to find some basic resources. Right here I think is probably the literal best spot that we will be able to get any resources, so we'll start right over there. I do think we need to take out at least one of our existing ships, so I'm going to unassign you and put, let's say, the Heisenberg back in charge. And then we're going to move the Heisenberg over here to the destroyed command center. Not going to finish the event, but there's no reason not to at least gather up the 35 science, am I right? When we do decide to start moving the Tycoon Space Station, we are going to make sure that we have lots of battery power for all of our sectors, because we are going to take a while to traverse across it. I think three to four cycles is about what you can expect, so we're actually not that far off on some of our battery needs, but we will be coming back to that. I might do some rearrangement of a couple of sectors, since it is otherwise free to scrap up some buildings. Uh, we should be able to free up, let's say, a load of these farms and relocate them in an area that makes a bit more sense. Because this has kind of been a little haphazard at best, you know what I mean? That said, we've also got loads of food. Maybe I'm not too worried about it right now. Actually, economically speaking, we're in fantastic shape. We've got absolutely nothing to worry about right now. What I do want is to make sure that we have lots and lots of electronics, because we're going to end up needing that eventually as well. So we've arrived over here at the destroyed command module. Let's just go ahead and start collecting a whole mess of science. Get up to toward that 90 value, because that's where we're going to get the tier 3 stuff. All right, we found some carbon, we found some iron, and we found some silicon. Let's go ahead and allow these guys to actually do their jobs. We'll go ahead and get started with all of these, I think. We will need to find a source of ice. That's something we are currently still missing, but that's fine. Once you guys find these resources, go ahead and start picking some of them up. And over here in Sector 6, I have been planning on building out this um, EVA airlock, but I actually think I've changed my mind about this one. I don't really want this to be over here. So cancel that if you guys don't mind. Uh, can we do that? Yes, there we go. Make sure we cancel this. Get our, res our resources back. What I'm probably going to do is actually move the probe launcher from Sector 1 and bring it over here instead, where we're making all of the polymers. The reason I'm doing that is because we have some sector specializations over here. If I turn this back on real quick, we can take a look look at it. Uh, with the space stuff here, we can see hull repair is 10% more efficient. It makes sense to have more EVA airlocks inside of the same sector with the space specialization. The probes, we don't really benefit from in any other way until we get to tier 2, and even then I don't think we do. But these, yeah, we can go ahead and at least relocate a couple things over here, and that's just going to make me a little bit more efficient. We do have some more events. Whoa, lo, 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 lo. <laughs> That's a bit of a bit of a meme there, all right. Administrator, a sector has converted to the cult of the hull. This has a positive impact on the morale of the crew. The converts are waiting to hear your opinion on their worship. Sanctifying the Tycoon and its facilities does not directly violate any Dolos directives. 
So idolize our leader? Um, I mean, eh, hmm. I don't know if this does anything, actually. This might have some uh, impacts toward the very end of the game, maybe. I honestly have no idea if this is also supposed to be a reference to the Cult of the Wall from T Attack on Titan. Who knows? Um, anyway, so the point is, I don't think there's any downside to doing this. It might have an impact, it might not. As far as I recall from playing the game previously, it really doesn't show up again. So, sure, we'll just go ahead and write, uh, embrace the writings of Bargeville. The Tycoon is a body, the whole is a skin, and we are its blood. I don't think it has any impact. So, it's just cool, I guess, sort of. So, what kind of tech do we think we're going to want this early in the game? Truth be told, I don't really know if any of these are crucial yet. There are some additional stability buildings, which is kind of nice. The Exo Fighting Dome, for example, not bad. Uh, the bonus can be extended every sector if you do have a train station, though I think this is a massive building, so probably not something we're going to do right away. There's a whole temple right there, by the way, so if we do have the Cult of the Hole in the sector, then we get a little bit of extra stability there. Health centers, not a bad idea. Mostly, though, a lot of the Tier 3 uh, researches are meant to be connected and have their bonuses applied to every sector if you get something like a train station, and these are pretty darn good to have. The question for me, though, is there anything better for me to use right now? A drone bay. Now, that's not a bad idea. What you can do is quickly transfer resources between sectors if you have a drone bay. I kind of like the idea behind this and the train station. Both of them are solid choices. Um, the only alternative would be to go for other things like, let's say, making the Tycoon move faster or take less deterioration so we'll be able to get through the storm a little bit better. But I can come back to stuff like that without too much issue, I think. Administrator, the debris field we have entered is mostly composed of corpses. The floating bodies bump against the hull and create sounds that reverberate through the Tycoon sectors. This is not providing beneficial for crew morale. Yeah, that's kind of unsurprising. DLS reports indicate that EVA crews are discussing the experiences working outside the Tycoon with colleagues in mess halls, compounding the problem. Yeah, so that's not great. We now have the corpse field. Uh, morale gets affected. Right now, everything's looking fine. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get a minus stability. I feel like that's what's going to happen. We did get rid of the minus stability from staying in one system for too long, which is good. That'll come back eventually, though, so uh, it just kind of gives you a very brief moment of uh, relaxation. Going to continue launching a few more probes. We could find the points of interest. It's okay to discover them. Again, I'm just not looking to complete all of the events. Um, generally, we probably want to find points of interest closer to the borders of the storm and complete those first, if that's going to be an option for us. Because that's obviously uh, the first place that's going to get swallowed up. We discover an industrial zone wreckage over this direction. Okay, there should be another point of interest, I think, right over here as well. So once I get another probe, we'll go ahead and discover that too. Let's launch a probe over this direction, discover that other point of interest I was talking about, get ready to send the Heisenberg. Got a bit more science once again. Um, da -da 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 -da. You know, I'm going to go ahead and learn about things at like that drone bay and the train station. Let's go ahead and get those knocked out. They're going to be good. At some point, they are absolutely going to be good for me. A collapsed food production district with 21 more science. Don't mind if I do. 44 more science over at Crook P38. Well, that's nifty. I've now got access to both the drone bay and the train station. Um, I think it's under... is it under population that I can get the train station? Hang on, where is this thing? It's here somewhere. Or actually, maybe it just automatically applies over here. I don't really remember for sure. It's not anywhere I can build in here for some reason. Um, maybe it actually just automatically applies to every sector. It just says that it speeds up the crew transfer. Um, alright, well... Cool. Um, if that is the case, though, it means we can now start focusing on getting some research for things that give me bonuses in all sectors. Like the whole temple, or maybe a health center. And I guess since this is my space sector where most of my resources are being delivered, it's not a terrible plan to just go ahead and build a drone bay over here. I have been hoping to save some of this for maybe a stability building, but... Yeah, I guess this is okay. Let's go ahead and get this thing constructed. 85 alloys and 4 electronics. Ay ay ay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I see a drone flying around over here, dropping stuff off. Okay, so the drones are active. I don't have to actually build anything. Now, something that has been reported is sometimes... Oh, there they go. You're going to have bugs uh, occasionally where the drones don't, like, actually go and do anything. But, um... Nope, looks like they're functioning as intended right now. All right, excellent. I don't think it's going to hurt to go ahead and do one of these events over here. Just to show you guys how this works. Because I honestly should be in a good enough economic position that if we want to move the storm... 
I could kind of do that early if I wanted to. There's not really an incentive to do that besides, you know, making entertaining YouTube content. So, uh, yeah, let's, um, let's do this one. Let's see, in the Heisenberg, we are in orbit of P38, a corrosive atmosphere. Uh-huh, okay, search protocol now. We do know a signal is transmitting from beneath a mountain. We could focus on analyzing material samples to improve our understanding of planets. Um, I'm pretty sure the best option here is going to be to perform a topographical uh, analysis. I don't remember if there are any others beyond that, but this one's supposed to be pretty good. Okay, we finished that one up. Uh, the signal was transmitting from an abandoned subterranean complex. By breaching it, we have unfortunately allowed the corrosive atmosphere of P-38 inside. We would estimate that the complex was built within the last 20 years. We do not recognize the iconography on its exterior. The technology inside does seem human-made, and there are signs that it was once inhabited. There's still a little time before P-38's corrosive atmosphere eats through the Heisenberg's hull and landing gear. We do not think we'll be able to explore the entire site, but we have identified several places of interest. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to then also go to the command center. I think this one's supposed to be the better option. But I'm pretty sure you also won't be able to finish all of them up. So you kind of have to pick and choose. Might be wrong on that one, though. Chapter 3 is where a lot of my knowledge of the game starts to fall a little bit further behind. Chapters 1 and 2, I did a lot of practice ahead of the series. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Chapter 3, I remember quite a bit about it. And I certainly know some of the tricks as far as the storm. However, all of the events, uh, I don't remember quite as well. Found another wreck over here, reactor wreckage. Another 18 science to be discovered in that area. Basically, in this entire zone, you can see all the different spread out segments of the Itemanankis, uh wreckage over here. There's, there's kind of a lot spread out all over the place. How big was this dang ship? That's what I want to know. All right, we find over here an intact data drive that was still installed within the center's infrastructure. The disk was heavily encrypted and a significant percentage of its data has been corrupted. However, the data that was accessible has proved very useful. The logs left behind by the center's former inhabitants are technical and precise. They suggest their authors possess an uncommon intelligence and acute sense of self-criticism. Strangely, the organized methodical accounts are occasionally interrupted with mysticism and spiritual remarks. These are seemingly present to justify the results of their court, uh, Cartesian deductions. Cartesian, sorry. 100 more science. Well, that's beautiful. All right. Next, I think we go for the field operations area. The team identified the area as a sealed landing bay. Once home to several craft of different sizes, signs of EKP travel were found, of a type much more advanced than anything we've come across so far. The team also found traces of organic matter and blood. Some of this was salvageable, and sample analysis revealed that several species seem to have passed through the area. All DNA samples show that some structural similarity to that of humans. It seems likely that this complex was used as a test site for the introduction of species into the P-38 ecosystem. The various integrity sensors of this crew's suits, as well as the Heisenberg, indicate that this is a necessary to repatriate the team. So that should be, I think, everything we're able to do. Do we then leave? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have to leave now. If I recall correctly, doing this is going to result in people dying because the corrosive atmosphere should be getting through. Might be wrong on that, but I'm not taking any stupid risks. That's another 140-something science. Beautiful. Over here, I am going to research an upgrade for the EKP engine. The faster the Tycoon is able to move, the less damage we're going to inevitably take when we have to book it through this storm. Okay, if that's all the science we're able to get there, let's move over to the reactor wreckage. We're going to pick up another 18 or so. Sitting on a lot more science once again, could go for yet another reactor boost, and I'm going to do it. I know that sounds absolutely ludicrous. I think the third level might be somewhat unnecessary. But if I move fast enough, I don't need to also invest in a whole bunch of battery upgrades, I hope. Um, we could activate the Nihai Quarter Protocol, so we start generating extra waste per inhabitant. Um, and in every sector, I do have waste recycling, so this actually be a way of starting to generate a lot of extra waste and start getting a second one of these recycling centers up and a running. Because if I had that, uh, obviously that just translates into more of literally anything I want. Oh, do we see any sign that the storm has grown? I think it has grown a little bit in this general area. Uh, still no sign of it clearing up down over here, though. We'll need to finish up some more of these events. We found a planet that is suitable for colonization way out over here, P-42. But again, I'm not going to do that right now, because if we do, then the storm eventually is just going to sweep through and make this impossible to deal with. So, good to know that it exists. Nothing I can do with it right now. I actually don't think there are any more points of interest I can deal with over in this area. Pretty sure we've got everything that's currently uncovered by the storm. 
So we just want to probe around for basic resources. But again, remember, once the storm comes through, none of this is actually going to be accessible anyway. So the question then becomes, how long do I want to just, you know, sit here? I mean, this is kind of the insane thing right now. We could sit here pretty much indefinitely. We're, we've got plenty of access to resources right now. Our economy is... I mean, if anything, it's, it's kind of overdoing it. We are sitting on so many resources, I don't even know what to do with all this stuff right now. So we're looking great on this front. I can leave kind of anytime I want, but <laughs> we could also stay as long as I want. And this is where Chapter 3 becomes just kind of a drag, in my opinion. I mean, there's a lot to do, don't get me wrong. It's just, you're incentivized, if you know what you're doing, you're incentivized not to do any of the fun stuff. Eh, whatever. I honestly feel like I'm in such a good position, I can just go ahead and do some stuff. Let's uh, take a look at the destroyed command center. Although the command center of the Itemananki is heavily armored, the structure has suffered terrible bombardment. It appears as if something sliced through the larger superstructure of the Itemananki. This must have dislodged the center and separated it from the rest of the ship. Numerous pieces of... Gimli, would you please? My boy, my sweet boy, I love you so much, but I'm trying to read some very suspenseful stuff right now. Thank you. Uh, let's see, some pieces of debris and corpses float around the ruin. We have located a breach within the armor plating that should allow us to get inside. Let's spend a couple of cycles entering the command center. Oh, here's where the trains are. Whoopsies. Okay, I remember how this works now. You're supposed to click on the gateways themselves. Remember when we clicked on these in order to open up a new sector? Here it is. So if we want to, we can spend some alloys and we can spend some electronics to get these train stations built up. Yes, I'm absolutely going to do that. It doesn't take any space. You don't have to place it down, but you do have to build the dang things. There we go. You can kind of see these lines, these rails that go up along the edges of the sector. So with all of that built up, we've used up a ton of alloys all of a sudden, but that's fine. Now we can very rapidly transfer people around between sectors and... When we get those specialized buildings, they'll give a bunch of different effects to multiple sectors, which is going to be very, very powerful for us later on. Powerful. Powerful. Good lord. Oh, this is the curse of doing YouTube. Sometimes your brain just trips over of the stupidest things, you know? Anyway, at the destroyed command center, the frozen rooms through the Heisenberg's team have had to navigate are a nightmare. Projectile damage covers most surfaces, and there are signs of electrical fires having raged throughout the corridors. This is not to discount the ever-present grim sights of severed corpses. Upon entering the bridge, the team discovered the bodies of the Commander-in-Chief and other officers. It appears they took their own lives. We must retrieve the Remus data. The Tycoon should be kept in close proximity to the command center. This will allow the Heisenberg's teams to use the station's power via the retractable telescopic pole and across the center's terminals. Now we are going to recover the coordinates of the exoplanet Remus. Um... What the ever-loving crud happened to the Itemenanki? That's the real question. Because, I mean, it's not like they were fighting Dolos over here anymore. The Protagoras is left behind in the previous sector. So, what destroyed the UN? These are the real questions that should be keeping you up at night in Ixion. Seriously. Administrator, the Remus's coordinates aren't here. As you know, Vol coordinates are incredibly complex algorithms that require advanced technology for their storage and application. We did identify a storage area within the command center where such equipment, perhaps including that stolen from the Protagoras, should have been held. It has been ripped away, shorn by cutting lasers, and taken. Oh dear. There is some small hope. A single damage calculator terminal was found. Power supplied from the Tycoon has allowed us to access it. It appears that the Itimanankis' final moments, while they attempted to address the colossal damage done to the ship, the crew were able to identify and record the self-similar signature of their attacker as it withdrew. Perhaps they hope to later mount some sort of pursuit to recover the stolen coordinates of Remus. We are now in possession of that signature. It belongs to the Pira Piranesi. Oh god, I hope I'm saying that right. Piranesi sounds right. A ship of the Black Market Society. This is where our hope fades. The few officers' logs we have found that detail the attack are terrifying. It seems highly likely that the coordinates of Remus are now aboard the Piranesi. Having processed the data we have found within the center, and thanks to old recordings of now inactive distress signals, we have been able to locate other parts of the Itemenanki which have drifted across this system. We're going to go ahead and stop that there, gather up the science, and then we'll worry about the rest, because again, why rush moving the storm if we don't have to? I do want to point out that we are now starting to stock up a ton of waste. All the more reason I really need to get some more people over here so that we can get a second recycling center up. This is where the power of waste becomes really, really good. We can have a near infinite source of alloys to the point where I won't even need iron in order to maintain the ship. I mean, that's not like enough to expand very rapidly, but at least it removes the threat that if we ever run out of uh, iron and therefore alloy, our ship is going to die. Waste is really, really powerful and should never be underestimated.
Anyway, back to the command center. Uh, do we want to investigate into the attack or the previous mission objectives? I'm pretty sure we're going to end up doing both anyway. Let's investigate further into the attack. As the Itimananki paused in the CURC, Kruk system, it was surprised and attacked by the Piranesi. Reports indicate colossal casualties. The UN crew was able to find a flaw in the Piranesi's defense systems and managed to mount a boarding assault. The Piranesi responded by firing its main weapon before fleeing the system. The last survivors of the attack, who could not enter cryonic pods, either died from the cold or slowly asphyxiated in the days that followed. Well, that's upsetting. And by powering the command center, the Heisenberg's team was able to extract and analyze core mission data. The Itamananki was a UN ship initially launched to find other exoplanets. Early data logs of their voyage indicate a glaring lack of preparation to accomplish such a task. In the absence of habitable exoplanet, they seem to have concentrated on the search for the what the UN had designated as enemies of humanity. Dolos and the... Ashtangites? Ashtangites? I think it's Ashtangites. By boarding the Prota uh, Protagoras, the Itamananki was able to locate Remus. And this should finish off the command center. There's the storm moving forward. Aha! See, and this is where you need to be a little scared. We have an incoming transmission. Mm-hmm, okay. We have found that the Piranesi's signature stored in the Itamananki destroyed command center. It's a ship unlike any other in our records. A formidable opponent in possession of Remus's coordinates. We have no choice but to confront them. Before we leave, we better figure out a way to actually beat them. Yeah, makes sense to me. Jeez Louise! Awaken 2,000 more cryonic pods? Oh! I don't want to do that! That sounds awful! We also now have a requirement to build enough batteries so that four sectors have the backup power for five cycles. So that basically means we now have to get things like the medium battery, the tier 2 battery should be sufficient, I believe. Uh, it also means I have to open up a fourth sector at some point soon. That one probably will end up being a sort of population center. We'll probably put in uh, a load of our cryonic pods. We'll have to awaken a lot of people. We might even turn on the policy specifically to only wake up workers and then fill it with enough stability buildings that we don't actually have to suffer for that. It also would be a very good location to put things like the whole temple, maybe an exo-fighting dome if we can fit it, and definitely a health center. And then as long as everything is connected by trains, sector four becomes very strong. I do think it's time that we actually undock the Grail and bring back the Gannet as our science ship, because for this next area, we're going to probably want to just go ahead and get everything done all at once. So I'm going to move the Gannet over here, and the Heisenberg over here, and we're going to try to finish up both of these sectors basically at the same time, pulling all of our ships back. The storm is going to surge forward, we're going to retreat as much as we can, and then we're going to make a beeline for it. But hey, look at this! We found a whole load of new stuff. So what do we do at the industrial zone wreckage? Um, I think we want to investigate a storage area, look for a source of yellow particles. Let's um, let's let's start with the yellow particles. Color me intrigued. Specifically, the color is yellow. And then over at the food district, we are on site. This part of the ship was responsible for food production. It has two zones: vegetal and animal. What about mineral? No, it's fine. Uh, identified a self-contained aerial containing a heat signature. Mm. Um, we can do, I think, all of these, though I think that the cautious approach leads to some issues later. So let's um, let's start with the vegetal zone. Now, realistically, I think that this exists in the off chance you don't have a lot of food, and I'm pretty sure we're going to find a load of food here. So if you're if you're finding yourself in that sort of a position, maybe this is one of the first things you go for. We have been building our ship very carefully and methodically here so that food is not even remotely a concern. So I don't care about that one iota. Let's see, what do we find in these industrial ruins? We follow the trail of yellow particles through the vacuum to another section. It appears to have been at least partially spared from the destruction we have seen elsewhere. The particles come from crushed and damaged flowers of yellow squash. A bed of these frozen plants surround a large bronze sculpture, a depiction of Earth crowned by laurels. Many messages have been left near the sculpture. Uh, railing against the perceived enemies of humanity, Dolos and the Ashton Geints. Uh, plaque the base reads, against the cynicism that kills hope, against the madness which precipitates hell, to perpetuate the genius of humanity and the memory of our life on Earth. There was a sealed time capsule. It could potentially be opened. You know, let's do it. I like time capsules. Who doesn't? All right, over here, what do we find? Drilling through layers of debris, we found a vegetable production area. They were greeted by the floating corpses of UN soldiers and crews. Ah, I think I know how the plants are fertilizing themselves. 
A few district workers seem to have roached, uh, sorry, reached emergency cryopods before depressurization. Hey, we apparently need these if I'm going to open up 2,000 of the dang things. That said, we don't need to pick them up right now. It's kind of okay to leave them where they are. Hydroponic technology was used to grow fruits and vegetables in large vertical aisles. Recovered yield reports uh, detail how hierarchical rationing reserved the rarest of foods for higher ranking crew members. Got it. So now we get personalized instructions as a new tech. Let's investigate the animal pens. And what does that new tech do? I do not remember. Um, that one right here. Food production speed increased by 40%. Oh, wow. Oh, here's a tech I really want. Crop farms produce 30% more wastes. Yes, let's do that. Inside the space capsule were toys and other everyday items. This is a very long thing. If you want to read through all of this, you certainly can. But basically, um, Earth went all heck and installed a totalitarian government of planetary surveillance to protect the population from eco-terrorists and waves of pandemics. Yeah, they did their absolute best, but it does not appear to have worked one bit. Um, Alright, so they were meant to be the great arc of humanity, the global project that would save humankind. Only those deemed well-behaved in the eyes of the government would be allowed on board. Uh-huh. And all that was left behind on Earth were the deviants and the dissidents. Very, very scary, but we also get a new tech, self-cleaning lubricants for the waste center. Let's explore the industrial zone next. I think that's gonna be fine. And what do the self-cleaning lubricants do? Over here, there it is. These are gonna reduce the power costs, but it's gonna be a little while before we can get to that. We are what we eat. The production area was gutted for several hundred meters. A huge amount of floating carcasses made it difficult for the team to differentiate between what is animal and what is not. Ew. Found a load of cryopods. That's good. Uh, they want to note that a cryopod contained a dog. The owner seems to have decided the animal's life was more important than their own. Their corpse hangs onto the pod. That's just sad. Do you want to find a new home for the dog? Yeah, I want to find a home for the doggo. Okay, the industrial zone itself is devastated. Factory machinery and crew were covered by flying molten metal as depressurization occurred. Yikes. Okay, uh, cryopods in the area were covered by steel or compromised, so we can't get anything except for some science. I'm not going to move on to the next one right over here. I'm just going to gather up the science for a bit. Because remember, once you're done with these events, the storm moves on. Do we save the dog? Uh, did not expect this decision. I would remind you that Dolus regulations prohibit animals from on board the tycoon. However, it may be good for morale. I strongly agree with that. Oh, I got an achievement as well. Yay. Okay, embrace of breaching time. Uh, all ships are now going to be returning back, so we should be good. Because remember, this storm is very suddenly going to come up on us next. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and start preemptively rebuilding some of the hull because I'm expecting to take a lot of damage. It's a big magnetic storm. Okay, if you're following along, I would recommend you save your game now because this is where things can go pretty badly if you do this wrong. So here's a bunch of resources I don't have time to get. We're going to leave the wreckage and I'm going to tell the Gannet to return immediately to the Tycoon. Um, now, what I don't remember is how much power we need to move on, but we should see the storm advance. It's not quite enough to open up these areas. It's kind of giving you a warning that it's getting close to that point, though. Over here, collapsed food, that's 10 science. Yeah, okay, we're gonna go ahead and leave this. Uh, and now we need the Heisenberg to immediately book it back to the Tycoon. All right, here comes the storm. Wait, um, yeah, we should be able to get across this now safely without too much issue. If I wanted to, we could actually go for the reactor wreckage, but if we did, I'm pretty sure my science ships would have a very strong chance of death. So I'm gonna try to get these guys back. How long would it take for the Tycoon to get over here? 3.8 cycles in pretty much any of the locations. And now we're gonna take the Tycoon, and we are gonna book it over to, let's say, the Medical District Wreckage. All right, very dangerous. Taking some damage along the way, for sure. I'm even gonna turn on another airlock just to be safe. Hi, doggy! This is weird. The crew has discovered it's not actually a dog, a borzoi, to be exact. Not discovered how it came to be on board. Its mere presence violates several health protocols. But it does seem to be benefiting morale quite a bit. Um, uh, uh, mm, I'm gonna recognize the dog as a member of the crew. Permanent stability bonus! Yay! Now, while the tycoon is traveling, I'm gonna go through here and I'm going to avoid all of these resources. I wish there was a way to mass do this. Maybe there is and I'm just not familiar with it. But I do not, whoops, want to risk any of my ships making the mistake of coming out here to gather up resources when I'm not paying attention and then we lose the ship. At least not until the storm has passed. Oh my god, we just took a massive hit to our hole. Holy crud, that was scary. 
Yeah, and that's why I've got three EVA stations trying to repair this thing right now. We are booking it as fast as I possibly can. You need the engine upgrades. You really, really do. Or else you're going to be in a ton of trouble. I actually am kind of wishing I had gone for the reinforced steel cladding just to uh, reduce the deterioration a little bit. Hopefully this is not a horrible mistake, though. We just need to have not one more of those events. One more might be enough to kill us, but we're almost in the clear. Almost in the clear, and we should now be safe. Well, I say that, we're on fire! Hold on! Oh, wait! Um, fire station, fire station, I need a fire station. We'll place it right over here. Quickly, quickly, quickly! The good news is I did research the Stanford Initiative, so we automatically start repairing buildings just by having this right now, which is pretty helpful. Reduced chance of accidents. Ooh. That actually is pretty darn good, but anyway. So we're gonna get the fire station up and a running. Um, this is something we may not need really beyond this. Um, it's kind of the damage has already been done, I think. We'll get this stuff repaired automatically. Uh, but, but, the mere having of the fire station is going to be important at a later date. For reasons I'm not going to disclose. For now, let's go ahead and send our science ships out over here. Again, the, if we can finish out these events, the storm will simply move on. So we now want to finish these out as fast as we can. And we should start probing for some more local resources. Um, there's some ice and some silicon. You know what, good enough. Let's just find out what's going on over here. Alrighty, I think this is a good place for us to end this video. I assume we're gonna get this fire uh, under control, but worse come to worse, here's the fire station. And it's spreading. Yup, we need to get this fire station going. <laughs> we need to get it going for sure. But we braved the storm, all right? We challenged the storm, we crossed through it, we took some damage, but we're gonna be just fine and dandy. Now we need to find out what the heck else happened to the Itamananki over here, find some more resources, and fin move the storm on. Then we will be able to explore the rest of this area at our leisure, before moving on to chapter four. Thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed. If so, I'd ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.